Yo, Wagwan, hope you're having a great day. In this video, I'm going to be showing you how I master my beat. So if you are having trouble getting your beats sounding the way that you want them to sound, getting them to sound professional, getting them to sound ready for artists to actually come and lay vocals over them, then this video is going to help you out a lot because it's going to teach you how I master my beats, basically. So before we get into the meat and potatoes i'm jay carter ray from jaycarterray.com if you didn't know teaching you how to be better at music online business and online marketing this is the number one spot for creatives and musicians that don't want to be starving artists so if that sounds like you you're in the right place maybe hit subscribe check out the rest of the content i've got on the channel but let's get into it very very straight forward here's a beat that i created last night i believe now i haven't mixed it let's be real this is not a mixed beat i'm going to do some bareface mixing right about now like i'm just going to quickly go over it and see where anything needs to go but i have created this beat using my r b trap mixing template so everything's already half mixed i don't really need to do much at this point um, in order to get it to a mixed level it's ju basically just preference at this point and getting everything perfect so i'm going to do that really quickly quick once over and then get into the mastering side of things but i think this is an important process for you to learn as well and i think i can get through some quick advice to help you get your track to a point where it's ready to be mastered if you want to see my full video on how i mix tracks go and check that out over there i'll put like an arrow and all that sort of stuff but let's quickly play this back so you can kind of hear what we're working with Ah, oh, weird. So this shouldn't be going into the synth base. <laughs> I don't know why that was doing that. I must have accidentally connected that, but I've just fixed that now. So everything everything sounds kind of like where I want it to be, actually. So the main, the main problem areas that we'll need to check out are the places where there's a lot of melodies. So like over here, we need to make sure that everything that we want to come through is coming through. The drums have been mixed pretty well already so i won't really need to mix um, mess with that too much so let's quickly hear this but well, we want everything to be subtle so could do that That's a bit uh, transition to be honest. What's also important is, you know, where the actual master track gets up to, where the DBs are. Mm. 
my everything's below six so i'm pretty happy with that generally i'd push it to six we can push this kick if we really want to let's come back and hear where that goes I think that's enough. I don't really want to push it any further than that. So really, generally I'll mix everything around the kick. The kick will be the highest thing going on. So it will be like either at six or under six dB and then everything else will come around that. So we pretty much got everything where we want it to be so at this point we've just got to focus on the loudest part of our track and basically fling on our mastering now so what i use for mastering is ozone 8 and basically we're gonna we're gonna add another ozone 8 over here let's actually save the track because i am recording anything can happen at this point <laughs> like everything could just stop working so basically we'll open up ozone 8 and with this we're going to use its auto its automatic feature to basically get a starting point for our master track and then i just add a few more modules which you'll find out what modules they actually are in a bit and then do a little bit of finagling and generally we're done okay so ozone 8 is now open so we'll go to first we need to make sure this is on okay it's on we'll go to we'll go to mastering assistant and then we'll select this for streaming and then now we need to play our song so let's do that Jesus Christ. Let me quickly, I want to quickly turn Ozone off because it seems like, yeah, it seemed like it was going over six for some reason, but I think that might just have been because of the Ozone. So let's turn it back on. Okay, here we are. And what Ozone has done is it basically creates, like it basically does what we need. It sweeps off some of the, the low end. It peaks some of the, the mid highs. Doesn't do anything with the dynamics unless you want to turn it on. Takes out some of the muddiness around like three to 400 and 600 and then it maximizes it so that it goes to um, minus one, which we actually don't want it at minus one. I'm gonna put it at minus three because this is a beat, it's not a full song. So we still wanna leave space for the artist. Now, any serious artist is going to request the stems and they're gonna mix the beat lower than even this so that when they master it, they've got a lot of headroom. So what we do now, is first let's listen back to that and see what it sounds like that actually sounds quite powerful i quite like that so what i usually add now is i'll add a vintage tape and i'll go to the preset increased warmth or we could do gentle hug but we're going to do increased warmth here we're going to bring that before the maximizer and we'll also add an imager which will basically bring our beat out a little bit and we'll use modern width over here so we'll bring that before the maximizer and we'll just play it back And another tool that we actually have 
is the tonal balance control. So this tonal balance control comes from Isotope plugins as well. And what this does is it basically shows you where your frequency should be hitting and where they actually are hitting. So actually, let's actually listen back to it. Usually my bass is far higher than it um, says. My low mid is usually okay, but it's my high that's usually um, terrible. But as you can see, high is actually pretty good over here. So everything's basically in a good place except for my low is too high but i like my low end being very high so now we can see the difference let's play this back so you can kind of hear what's going on here it's basically way louder let's let me not talk over it let me give you some spiel before we get into it it's going to be much louder it's also going to sound fuller and more cohesive it's going to sound like everything's pushed together everything's supposed to be where it's supposed to be everything's you know a friend indeed <laughs> right about here so let's uh get into that but before we get into that if you want to grab 10 free loops there's a link in the description down below. Go to jcartofray.com forward slash free loops. That's my gift to you. Go grab that, get involved. And yeah, let's continue on with the video. This is called Ray Cookie. Okay, so that's basically it. It's very straightforward. Mastering is just about applying overall effects to the overall song. So what someone would usually do, they bounce this track out before they've mastered it. They mix it and then bounce it into a web and then take it into a completely different project. I do suggest that as well because it just gives you more computing power. Because right about now, as I'm doing this and mastering it, I've got all these other effects, which is generally just EQs um, happening in the background and whatnot. We've got like a reverb here and there, but generally I, I just bounce everything down. So I'm using less effects anyways but generally you'd want to bounce it out to a WAV file, bring it into a new session and master it there. But honestly, I don't really find a difference between doing that and mastering it in the actual beat, um, the actual beat project. So I just do it in the beat project because it's quicker. Like when I'm mastering songs, I'll bring in the song that's been bounced down and bring it into its own mastering uh, project so that we can go through that and have as much computing power as needed because that's when you're getting serious because that's before you're releasing that to the world to actually listen to it to be on Spotify and all that sort of stuff when you're just making the beat you just want it to sound good enough basically for eyes to hear it and be like ah oh, okay I can jump on that or I can do this I can do that and then when it comes to proper mastering that's when you know they can take their engineer to go and, and master it or use the stems and get everything where they want it to be or they can send it back to you and ask you to master it if you do want me to mix and master your tracks there will be more information in the description there'll be a link down below so definitely go and check that out if that's something you're interested in but yeah the most important things to remember let's give a quick recap is 
that you want to get your mix right first of all like that's the most important part you need a good mix in order to master so you need to get everything where you want it to be i suggest everything be under 6 db because that gives you enough headroom to master the track and basically boost the track to around uh, 3 db or 1 db wherever you want to put it if it's already at 3 db then you can't really do much with the master section of the track because everything's too high already you need to give yourself headroom in order to boost that up to where you want to get it to and basically i, I just use ozone ain't man ozone ain't does most of the work for me so everything uh gets set up pretty pretty easily and then i'll just change whatever needs to be changed if i want a specific sound or something or things aren't hitting the way that i want it to hit then i'll go into ozone a and either move that around but usually what the problem is is your mix like either you got the kick too high so it's distorting or you got the melodies too low uh oh no the melodies too high so that your kick isn't hitting through and that isn't the main focus of the beat because when you want to get your kick and 808s proper smacking you need your melodies to be lower if your melodies are seem to be on the same level as the kick and the 808s then everything's going to be brought up equally and your kicks and 808s are going to be drowned out by the melody so make sure that you have your melodies at a reasonable space i generally have them quite low as you can see like 27 30 like i generally have them around here this is called rain cooking like I don't like to go too high and then the rest of the melodies let's let's go over here so you can see like a bunch of melodies together you'll see they're all basically under the main melody only like really only things that really don't stick out will be will kind of be louder than the main melody but you won't even really realize it the way that i mix it so it's kind of like you you just need to know what you're doing it you need to know where certain sound where you want certain sounds to be and how you want them to act within the mix and that's something that i'd have to teach you in a mixing video not a mastering video mastering is just about bringing everything together it's way it's more simple than mixing in my personal opinion especially because i'm using ozone 8 and it just makes it more simple for me personally um I'll, I'll leave a link down below to ozone 8 if you want it it's on my the tools i use to make music page so definitely go and check that out and see the other tools that i use to make music remember my free gift of 10 free loops for you to use in your beats links in the description or go to jcarterray.com forward slash free loops but before you go i want to ask what plugins have you been using or vsts have you been using to master your beats thus far let me know in the comment section down below maybe i can look into them see if i can review them see if they're any good or whatever see if i can give you any pointers or what you should be doing with those plugins uh etc etc be sure to hit that like button comment down below and subscribe so that i know that you're liking this type of content the more likes the more comments i get on this type of video the more i know okay let me make more videos about mixing and mastering and all that sort of stuff so definitely give me your opinions hit that like button and get involved in the next video you'll learn more about music online business or online marketing and i'll see you there peace out